Okay. All right. So welcome everybody to this evening's event, which is a talk by the AHA Collective, um, which is <laughs> Anna Goodchild, Annie Rapstoff, and Heidi Bergstrom, um, which is a collaboration between the UK and Canada. And they're going to discuss some of the technologies that were involved in the creation of their collaborative video, which is entitled Literal Zones, The Frontiers Between, which is a new piece from this year. Um, so with that, I will pass over to you three. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yes, Hello, thank you. So I'm going to um, manage our agenda, I guess, for this session. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say on behalf of AHA Collective, thank you so much, Lacuna Festivals. This is a great opportunity. Anna and Anna, Anna and Annie and I are really thrilled to be here. We're so excited because yes. we met through the um, ACE Proyecto uh, virtual residency in February, March earlier this year. And that's online through a group in uh, Buenos Aires. And we loved it. And we really clicked together quickly. Um, we didn't even know that we were going to be put in a group together. And, and um, the residency folks put us in this group. And we just found we had a lot of common ground between us and uh, a lot of different interests, but, um, you know, interest in each other's work. So that was really important. And uh, we came together very quickly to create this video uh, collaboratively, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, Anna is going to walk us through Google Earth and how we used Google Earth uh, in part of the video. And Annie's going to talk about another phone app, which is really neat, which we used and we love, which is called What Three Words. I don't know if any of you have ever used any of these applications before. But um, certainly we'll have time at the end for questions about the apps as well. And then Anna is going to talk about her use of microscope lenses with cell phones. And um, this, was, this was another one of those beautiful gems that came along during the creation of our video that um, we used for our chapter breaks. Uh, and then we're going to just have a little bit of Q&A and then we'll close off. And if you have any additional questions, I think you can put them in the chat. I believe the chat is active. So just put your questions or thoughts or any uh, reactions or anything in the chat. And we'll, we'll deal with those a little bit later. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to uh, share my screen and I'm going to play the video. If you haven't um, seen it, this will be our premiere. Woohoo! Woo a world <laughs> premiere. <laughs> Woo okay, so hold on. Let me um, let me give me one second. I just want to make sure. I think I might open up an additional window just because well, sometimes. Doing that, Heidi. I'll just say hi to Luana. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hi, you've just <laughs> arrived, haven't you? <laughs> we do have a, um, now can I get back to the Zoom window? This is always the trick. Where am I? Let's go to the Zoom window. It should be here. And it's not yet. Maybe this one. There we go. <laughs> but I love it. Okay, excuse me while I share my screen. tab share don't forget to put and the sound can everybody on. see that yes yes we can see that oh hold on a second it yeah. didn't ask me to share the sound okay maybe i'm going to try it again hold on this is always the thing that trips us up right yeah yeah, yeah. new share it asked me to share a tab chrome tab there we go. There's no little thing that says share audio. If you click on the advanced button, oh, in fact, you don't even have to. At the bottom of the box that pops up, there should be a little tick box that says share sound. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Didn't It didn't come up for me. Oh, that's weird. Well, try it. It might be there. I'll try it. Okay, I'll try it. <coughs> It is. Can it you is hear that? sound there, yeah. Good. Yeah.
There you go. All right. Thank you. Stop share. There we go. So there you go. There is our production, Literal Zones. And uh, of course, we always welcome comments and feedback. So um, thank you for letting us share that with you. And um, now I'm going to turn it over to Anna and who is going to talk about Google Earth Studio and how we did that. So Google Earth was really used in um, creating some animations that are that are in the film, but I'll turn it over to you. Go ahead, Anna. Thanks very much, Heidi. Um, yes, why, why Google Earth Studio? Well, right from the start, we were very much aware of the distances between us um, and how are we going to overcome these distances through our interactions um, and we actually started off because I, I love using Google Earth um, and so I'll show you um, the, our first exercise in it. What you saw in that film when you went across the, the, um, the houses and things, those were just from my house down to the harbour in Paynton. Um, very short distance um, and it was easily doable then. Um, what I found subsequently was that it's a lot more difficult to do it, um, to get some sort, some semblance of um, normality doing it over long distances. But I'll just show you. I'll um, just share screen a minute. Um, that one. There's no sound, so we're not very really okay with that. Right, can you see patches of green. Yes, we can yeah. see that you're sharing okay. mine. Yeah, good. Right, this is Lake Matheson in, um, uh, on Vancouver Island in Canada. Um, and that's where we started. Then we want to go to, um, we'll say, uh, Paynton Harbour. <clears throat> and we'll see what happens. Watch. It's upside down. And in there is Paint and Harbour. 
um, highlighted on the public toilets. I'm not quite sure why, but um, <laughs> it's just one of those things. So that's where we started. Um, from Paynton Harbour, we can go to um, uh, Oxfordshire, where Annie lives. And I'm just going to put in a, a, a postal thing. And we'll see what happens. So we get to and from the places quite easily. So now just to complete the circle, we'll go back to Matheson Lake. And off we go. There. Okay, so that's one experience which got us going. Then I, I tried to do the, um, the Matheson Lake to uh, Paynton on using 450 JPEGs, uh, which is what um, Google Earth uses. And this here represents the elevations. I had to go right up to 80,000 meters because otherwise everything is, is over in, in a huge hurry. But let me take you through that. Um, first of all, on the machine, and you can see, I'll just take this little screen and show you that we are virtually on the same latitude, um, 50 degrees, um, Matheson Lake and Paynton Harbour, and 51 up to uh, the River Thames where, where Annie lives. So I found that quite interesting and we get straight across the pond. I'm not sure where that music's coming from. Wow. Excellent. Well, we'll, we'll do it to music, shall we? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how that started, but that was, that was me, by the way. Oh, cool. Sorry about that. It was nice music. <laughs> yeah, so, so here we go. Um, I'll take you across rapidly because this is in incredibly fast and then I'll take you across slowly manually. This is up 80,000 feet going across um, the states and bits of Canada, bits of Nova, uh, Nova Scotia and then an incredibly long stretch across <laughs> the ocean. The ocean. Um, and there we are in painting. What I'm going to do now to show you what I found really interesting is to go from there, I'll, I'll just, I'll use just the bit, just the one screen so that you, um, you, you don't get too confused. Um, and we'll just go across and you can see what I found really interesting was how the layout of the land is so different, how people have patched up and um, divided their land so differently. And of course the, the, the actual geography is, is hugely different. Loads of expanses of absolutely um, lots and lots of squares. Uh, very geometric. I love this little area here. Mm. We'll go on to here, and this, this shows you how geometric North America is, or it might be in Canada there, I'm not quite sure. And that's absolutely beautiful. I'd have uh, these on my wall anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you know, it looks squashed. Um, but can you imagine all those little rivers and things going around? I'll go around here and there again we have the fabulous divisions, geometric divisions. They get lost, still lost. In fact, we don't really see them again so much. Perhaps just back here, there. That's Are, is that still over North America there, Anna? It is, yes. Or, it is, yeah. So probably it was passing over the Midwest where there's all farmland. 
Okay, and these little bubbles are just um, clouds covering. <laughs> but isn't that absolutely fascinating how you can go so slowly? And then we go over Nova Scotia. So this is the far eastern side of Canada. Yes. And then an awful lot of ocean until we get to England. This is the Southwest Peninsula. Okay. And we'll see where this goes. You see how the pockets of land are completely different. These are clay mines. Uh, wow. Extracting clay from, and it's, you know, a lot of moorland, lots and lots of rivers, more clay, China clay. And then you can see how these, the land is divided, but not so much in extremely tight geometric shapes, but a bit more higgledy-piggledy, a bit more human. I don't know. Perhaps I'm... I'm well the plains, the plains in um, the Midwest and in Canada, in the, the western part and the central part of Canada, are extremely flat prairies. Mm, so yeah. it makes it very easy to divide it on these grid lines, Absolutely. you know, and um, make sections. And uh, that's very traditional in the United States as well, mm. where there's these large flat prairies. Mm. And you see here, there are lots of rivers which means there are lots of valleys, which mm -hmm. means that there are lots of hills. So it ties in very well with what you're saying, Heidi. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, the China. Um, I made a note in the chat as well, Anna, that um, originally you had exported out the shapes of the bodies of water as well from this. Correct? Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, we used um, that right at the very beginning as the sort of defining graphic of the littoral zones, which is that where the water meets the land. Yes. And so we, there's Painton Harbor. Yeah. yeah, we're back at Painton Harbor here. And you can see how, you know, the, um, the houses are extremely closely packed. Um, but also with the, um, those shapes, um, Painton Harbor, was the shape for the, the um, Atlantic Ocean. And they appeared both the lake and, and Annie's River, the River Thames, and Heidi's Matheson Lake um, appear in the postcard that we sent um, from us to the Lacuna Festivals. I just hope you've got them. Yes, um, they're on display right now in the Yates uh, Gallery. Yeah. Hooray, hooray. Yes. I'm working on getting a list of all of the postcard artists online and I'm going to do that this week. Okay. So you, you've got, um, I've also done, um, uh, this is where Annie lives and the river is very close by. Uh, be, be a little bit of a way. Yeah. Yeah, nearer to these fields. Yeah, that's the, that's the river. Okay. I've, I've done a little flyover between, um, not quite sure why it's, uh, between that and painting. Anyway, um, we'll we'll leave that for the moment. Yeah. If you've got, I did it, one. From my, I did one from my studio too to Matheson Lake, which was not too difficult, as as you had said before. Mm. I think that that gets trickier and trickier the farther distances you try to get to. But the thing I like about the Google Earth Studio too is that you know it's a free application. First of all, mm. um, you have to attribute Google Earth. They they ha they stamp it. They watermark your film anyway. So. But it's it's pretty interesting to be able to get this kind of uh, extreme detail. Actually, it's quite amazing when the closer and closer you zoom in, the kind of detail that you can get. Yeah, if you wish. Um, yeah. Google Earth Studio uh, is used very commonly now with um, even with Hollywood films and such. Mm. Yeah, I um, think it really worked to, to to sort of help us to understand 
our locations as well mm -hmm. and how different they were and, and it really yeah. helped with the idea of you know sort of space and distance so that it was it was a really useful exercise wasn't it I think yeah yeah um okay and that this um, is part of Dartmoor so that, nice. that's um you know we, and we we've learned an awful lot about uh you know one another's countries um yeah and and, and it, we're also very curious human beings about where we live and where other people live. And seeing that distance is the theme of the exhibition, this mm -hmm. conveys the idea of distance really well. So I think um, I'm going to stop my Google Earth Studio. And if anybody's got any questions, please do ask. Thanks, Anna. You're welcome. Okay, now Annie is going to take us through the, the What Three Words app. Yeah. And why we use that and how we use that. Okay. So, sorry everyone, I'm just putting a few things up here on my desktop. <coughs> so, hi everyone, I'm Annie and I'm... Um, uh, part of the AHA Collective and um, I live in uh, a small town um, in Oxfordshire and very near to the River Thames. So that was the, um, when, when we started the film we all found locations near water which was the, the premise for, um, for, for the video work. And so I spent a lot of time at the River Thames, um, sometimes walking around with buckets of water, which people were really interested in. And, um, you know, wondering why I was walking around with buckets of water, but, you know, it was, it was a, yeah, it, it was a great, it was a great piece of work that we did together. And knowing that we were all doing it simultaneously, I think added, a real sort of energy to what we were doing and knowing that we were all in different locations and we we haven't met each other at all in person we've only met online so um i i um i've i've done some work before on an app called what three words i don't know if anyone knows it but it's um an app that you can download for your tablet or your phone you can't um I, I'm, I'm on a, a desktop at the moment, so um, I, ca I can't use it on a desktop, but it's really a mobile app. And it was developed um, for uh, really, it, it, the start of it was developed really for people who are either missing or who don't have an address. So there are many people in the world um, who don't actually have addresses and they might have some sort of number on, on their, on the side of their house, but they don't get post, um, they don't have an exact address. So, um, for them, you know, in a way they're sort of lost. So what three words, what, what three words does is it, um, divides the whole of the world into three meter squares and each, each square is given three words. So um, it doesn't use um, any, any sort of longitude or latitude or anything. All, all it does is just make the whole world into three meter squares. And, um, and each, each, each location has three words. So, um, so, for example, if you were in the favelas in Brazil, in some places, I'm not saying all of them, some places they don't have an address. So it's really useful to, to locate themselves with these words. And, and I, I'm, really, I'm really interested in text and language anyway. And, and the app is, is um, actually translated into, I think at the moment, 14 different languages. So, and that's growing as well. So, you know, it's quite accessible to people all over the world and it, and they are trying to develop it to make it 
um, accessible to even more people from different countries. So one, once you go into the app, um, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what comes up. So um, say for example, so I'm just gonna share my screen. I put a link in the chat for folks too, if they want to go and look at it, you can actually, you don't need to make Sorry. an account or anything. You can actually search your own location or um, put your location services on to find your grid. It's quite Great. fascinating to see how it works. Yeah. I'm just looking for my... I wonder if you can have your, what three words in a different language. So um, for example, <laughs> If I'm in England and I want the what three words in Spanish, does it come up in Spanish? Oh, I don't know, Anna. I, I, you know I don't think if so. You, if you look at, does. if you look at, yeah, I think you can change it. So I'm just going to change it to. Oh, okay. Um, Let's try it. Just see what happens. I'm going to see what happens. As far as I knew, it was it, is it, well, it was in English here, but that, then it would be really good if it wasn't. So um, mm. I don't know if you can see this. Yes, we can. And so yeah. this is just a, a, a photograph I've taken of uh, where I live, actually. So, um, you know, if you if you put the app on, which we've all, all done um, whilst we're sitting and talking to each other on Zoom and it will locate us here and it gives for me this these three words, which are dressing, chess and racetrack. They don't always make much sense, but that's the joy of them, really. So they, they're sort of quite amusing in, in some ways as well, you know. So, um, yeah, so so that that's that's basically the app. And you can also if you want to find your actual location, you can go to navigate and you can also share it, and then it will give you the GPS location. So it's not just the words. So you can you can get the location. So if 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 for example I'm in I'm in uh, I'm in the Lake District on a mountain and I get lost, um, I can I can send someone hopefully, or or otherwise you can link to emergency services because you can do that on your phone, um, mm -hmm. and you will get the location in those words, and then that will go through to the emergency services. So. So it, it, it's it's a it's a really nice, very sort of user friendly little app, and um, what it gives you is some sort of, especially for artists, I think it gives you something to to play with, you know. So so the words can really be useful. So say for example, in our film, um, the location where I was by the River Thames. I was able to make up some of the text from the location that I got where I was in the River Thames. So uh, yeah, so that, that, was, that was really nice. And um, so today I took uh, some, some words from, not that one. Okay. So, uh, have you seen that one? No. Yes. So th this is um, this is where I was and where I did my work. Which so we all worked in our um, chosen locations, and I was working around here in this area near Long Whitnam and, and Little Ham um, Clifton Hamden, and you can see this loop of the River Thames. And this is where I was actually located. And you can see the symbol here of what three words. And my symbol was completed, expert and running. So, yeah. So when I, uh, when I did uh, that, I did some text for, um, for the film from that location and from those words. So, uh, no, where are they? Sorry, guys. Just bear with me. I wanted to ask too for the search on this thing, if you're able to put in um, like the three words and then it'll show you on the map where it is, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
So you, you can actually it. find the GPS lo location as well. So um, okay. actually on, on uh, uh, the film itself, you might have seen some text scrolling along the bottom and that was actually stimulated by the words that I get, got from my location from what three words and that was breaking the surface, gathering your formlessness through vulnerable hands, element of life, shapeshifter, running on and on and on. And I, so I just, I just started with the word running really and um, went from there and that was how we, we got that text. So we've also all um, uh, shared our locations which, which all together are um, rings, nippy, sensory, manual loops, hobby, and residences, paradox, chimed. So this afternoon, I very quickly tried to put to, uh, together a little bit of text um, just to show you what you can do. And it's, it's very basic, but, you know, it was great to be able to start, have a starting point to put some text together. You know, if you're wanting to do something I don't know, some poetry or to add it to a film or um, yeah, just do some text-based work. So my little piece of text here was river loops, sensory flow, constant rings, chimes, the paradox of value, waters worth more than any diamond. So I just put that together <laughs> in, a, in, a, in 15 minutes. So it's a really fun app. I really like it. I think it's very accessible to anyone. Um, if you're, particularly if you're a walking artist, I think it's really useful. So I've done quite a lot of walking groups with walking artists and they use it quite a lot. And, um, you know, they also put together lots of text with it. So it's really good fun. And I recommend people to get it because you know, it's, it's just a really nice little app. So yeah, that's my rundown on what three words. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. I love it, love it. Um, okay. Yes. Um, we put some links, we put some links in the chat as well for folks if you wanna, if you wanna check either out Google Earth Studio or the what three words. And then now Anna's going to talk about the use of the microscope lenses. Yeah, um, I only have one microscope lens, which is this one. Okay. And that's the way up it goes. And it fits onto my iPhone 6, which only has one lens. Um, I suspect that Apple will do... Um, some applications for their um, multiple lenses that they've got. I'll just show you. Oh, no, sorry, is that, for, is that an Apple lens lens then? Oh, no, it's, it's, uni it's universal. Okay. But, uh, but since yeah. Apple has three lenses and actually um, quite a few um, photo, um, cameras have three lenses now, yeah. they, they might develop one which is I think a four some of them have now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when you you switch it on, this is what it looks like. And I've just put a pin in there. Okay. But I've I'm I have prepared some um some slides with um uh with my, my microscope lens, microscope lens. So I'm just going to show you. I'll share the screen. Okay, um, it's mostly just to see how close you can get to something. And I've got several people have written um, about what photography is. Um, and I, I like Jane's rather pessimistic um, definition here that um, photography gives us a flattened object in which wrecked reminders of the world are lodged. Oh, I think that's quite, quite, oh, that's quite interesting. Quite. But it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. And then he also claims that photography's apparatus, and this is just an extension, just another bit of apparatus, um, 
is consistently fetishized. Um, and I'm not sure that I, I agree, but maybe that's just me being a bit defensive. Um, um, most everyone who's serious about photography has a special attachment to some of their cameras and lenses. Oh dear, I think I might have one of those special attachments <laughs> to my, <laughs> to my yeah, microscope. I do too. To my <laughs> I do too. Phone. Oh good. Yeah. I'm not alone. So um, in, in my preparation for these um, micro uh, scope le uh, lens photographs, I have kept a constant and it's a uh, one penny coin, all right? And when I got this microscope lens, the literature told me that it had a 60 magnification. So I tested it this afternoon and it's precisely six, okay? Oh. It's, not, it's not 60. Really? Yes, so a bit disappointed, but um, yeah. I, was, I was hoping it would stretch to 10, but it didn't. Um, and, and then Willem Flusser is another um, photography philosopher who has a lot to say about um, uh, apparatus, photographic apparatus. And he maintains that any machine is just an extension of our arms, legs, and in this case, is it an extension of our eyes? It might be, because I, I want to see what's in different things much more closely than I can with my naked eye. And then James Elkins comes back and asks if the camera is a machine, is it addictive? Because it has greater capabilities than we have. Yeah, I suppose it is. And, you know, in my experience, I don't understand software in the camera just as I don't understand the software in, in a vacuum cleaner, but it doesn't stop me using and playing with them. I don't, I don't normally play with a vacuum cleaner, but <laughs> with, with a, a camera, yes. And I use the microscope because it helps me to see what I can't see and it feeds my curiosity and hopefully that of others. And I don't feel that I'm tearing anything away from the natural world as James Elkins seems to think. So these well, and I, would say, I would say to James too, Anna, that, you know, addiction has to do with our pleasure centers. Yeah. So if you get pleasure from something, it can uh, be very satisfying and then cause that return to it again yeah. and again. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, who, who wouldn't be attached to a microscope lens if you could go <laughs> from, from this to this? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, my husband, Steve, who, who is listening into this, does all sorts of things with his tools in his workshop. And he created this fabulous um, turning, it's not, not a turning, it's a shaving from a piece of metal that he was turning. Oh, well, that's beautiful, Anna. I know, oh, it is. Amazing. Look at that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and then, uh, we we are, uh, often go out in Dartmoor where we find sheep's wool and this is a little clump of sheep's wool and these are the little fibres that you can see under the microscope lens. And a poppy seed pod and that's what it looks like magnified. I, in this case I think I prefer it in this in the original version but mm -hmm. you know it's interesting to see that. And this is um, garlic paper, you know, the, the garlic mm. wrapping and, and how delicate it looks under the microscope. Um, this I picked up a long time ago. It's a little piece of oak tree and these are acorns being born, so to speak. Um, and when it, when I picked it, this is what they looked like. So, I mean, that to me is fascinating. Just yeah, love that's beautiful. I, I, you know, I would never have seen it otherwise. Mm. Piece of fern, little fern. Beautiful. Yeah. And this again is another one of my husband's tools. It, um, it grinds bits. Right, Steve? It, <laughs> yeah, anyway. And Whoa. this. What is it? It's, it's a grindstone, small, tiny grindstone. Right. Yeah, yeah. And this is, oh, drat, go back. Oh. A shell, 
Wow, and that's beautiful. It looks like a sort of fish scales or something. Yeah. But again, you know, you, you see you see the general shape and the general patterns on, on the shell, but you don't you don't ever go close to it. So yeah. that's the, the one on the um, here is the outside and this is on the edge of it mm -hmm. where there's a thing. And then this is a an oyster shell. This one here is on the inside and this here is on the outside. So here, this is where the pearl is formed. And these are just random bits and pieces that I, that I made. This is from a Polaroid um, slide that I, a, a Polaroid pho photograph that I took apart and just photographed the, the little membrane inside. This is a, a pencil sharpening, and this is a bit of wood that um, a lathe sort of pulled up. And then this is a, um, a peony petal in its original thing. Again, we can see the relative size and then the tiny veins that you can see. And finally, um, this oh. is um, yeah, some lichen mm. um, and then seen in a tiny part of it. And that's it. That's my it's fabulous like miniature worlds. Yeah, it, I love is. Them. it is. Yes. And Anna, during the film, you used those microscopic um, images, some of them, didn't you, to make the sort of chapters in the film? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, they work really well, I think. Yes, they they were all related to the sea. You know, there was um, seaweed with sand on it. There were um, shells, um, edges. Mm -hmm. Edges, yeah. Yeah. Here you go. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Fabulous. Brilliant. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of the of the bulk of the talk. So we have some time for questions. If anybody has questions or wants to make a comment, or has anybody used any of these um, apps before or technologies? Just from the audience. Or, or does anyone have any other apps they might want to share? Yeah, something yeah. else to share. We'd exactly. love to know. Um, Feel free to unmute yourselves, guys. They're not a big group. Um, live, so just unmute yourself and shout out. I just unmuted. I'm the Kate, the initials Katie. Hi, Katie. Um, oh, hi, Katie. I'm just out the bath, so I'm hiding myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I found I wanted to tune in and watch this one because um, of the what three words, and so I found oh. Annie's process really interesting and um, I found I don't have a smartphone and someone mentioned during the first lockdown they just happened to mention this what three words yes and um, what I normally do is work with found text as a poet yes yes and it immediately caught my attention absolutely oh um, yes you'd love it so it was it's only been a problem of time in the last year and I've sat down a couple of times to try and work with it and I know there's a lot of potential there yes. and it's just finding because one thing I one of the first things I came up against which might um I don't know how you all felt when you were working with these apps but for me it was a privacy related thing so for like I wanted to incorporate the names of places maybe in a poem maybe autobiographical and then I thought actually no because if I use those three words people will know exactly where that moment took place and, yes. and maybe that's not my place to reveal because I could say in a regular poem at your house but if I want to use the found text of what three words I would be identifying the house or the cafe yes. so I came up against the privacy and then I was trying to play around with it um, like, could I just get, could I just stack these three words on top of each other and see if I could get a poem, pick a location and see if I could get enough of a poem, suggestion of a poem, just by using the three words, the three words, the three words. But what I didn't think of and what I like what you did there was 
you used the three words as a jumping off point for your yes. own your own text yeah. yeah yeah so the way i used it katie was was not um so that you would know the exact location yeah as you, as you say i just yeah. took the words and i used them randomly but it yeah, is like a you were starting in, point to stimulate you. Were inspired you. by yes. the words and what what yes. it conjured up for you. Yes, and and you can get inspired by it in a in a whilst you're in the location, which is really oh, nice. Of course, yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh well, I hope that you find a way to use it because it's <laughs> yes, a really nice a little app. I just want a week of a blank week of time to get lost in what three words. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll send you. Um, would you? Would you perhaps um, send and um, put your email in the chat and and maybe we can have a bit of a chat about it. Katie. Yeah, I'll do that through. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. I'll, I'll put mine in. Maybe. Yeah. yeah so you can... on the chat, it is set up so that you can send messages to individual people. So if you oh, okay. just send yeah. it to each other and keep yes. it private. Yes, oh, I'll send it to you, Katie. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Where were we? So we've, we've just put our location in and just tried to find out where we are. And we're qualified ponytail dash. Oh! <laughs> 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 I just, I put in, I put in um, just the Canary Islands too, and they came up with gangway. Oh, now it went away. What happened? Canary Islands, Spain. Gangway collate gripes. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you can make something interesting out of that. Yeah. Yes. The thing is that you can go from one room to another in your own house, and it just changes every time. Yeah. So That's you can, amazing. you can you know, use lots of different things to describe your own, your own place. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I wonder if they knew. I not thought about that, but that's fascinating. Yeah. Sorry, we're just a yeah. logo. Let's put our video back on. Because um, I was reading a book. Oh, now I've started talking about it. I'm having total blank about, um, and it was a guy who traveled within his own house and wrote a book about it. And, oh, and really? It, yes. And it was like, oh, amazing. I mean, years ago, we're talking years ago, someone who was really interested in travel, and I can't remember why, maybe he was sick, maybe he was poor, maybe it just wasn't possible at those times. Oh, I read it right at the beginning well, of the lockdown, you, and I've read about you could, books, but I can, you I can find um, out and share it. Yeah, and could you let us know, please? Yes, yeah. I will. I'll put it in the text for the, when yes, we upload please. it to YouTube, I'll put it in the text yes. for that. Because that also, kind of idea with these words. Yes. Do, do you also, you've just reminded me, do you know the work of Georges Perec? Um, he's a French writer and um, he wrote about um, the, the sort of life inside a block of flats. So he would talk about like the doors or the floor or the furniture or how you go from one room to the next and how people in those rooms lived and um he's a really good writer okay yeah Did you put his name in the chat yeah yeah thank you i think um the book was called um species and places but i might have that wrong um yeah george perec yeah The What Three Words app has a practical application in Britain because all the emergency services use yes. it. Yes, yes. Um, but they have a problem with it because you can mishear the three words or have words that are very similar and they find they're heading off 150 miles in the wrong direction. So they're, oh, really? they're really quite worried about it at the moment because so many people uh, now use it for, the, for this purpose. Oh, I see. I thought it worked very well for emergencies. They're going to have to review that, aren't they, then, Steve? Yeah. Because yeah. that, that was the main reason it was developed, I think. That's right, yes. I, I carry yeah. it with me so that when I'm out sailing, uh, the lifeboat will be able to find me without me having to oh, start really? navigation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing that it's, it's actually squared off the sea. 
<laughs> the whole world. It's really incredible. It's a bit like going over Google Earth with all those squares of fields. Yeah, the, the views of the fields were absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I didn't show you the two that I've pulled up. Can I share my screen again? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Okay. I isolated two that I really loved. Um, there's one, this is, a, this is an English one. Um, oh, go away. Um, What's the pink, Hannah? That's the sandstone. We, we've got oh, lots of sandstone oh, here. Beautiful. That's the English one. You can, can you see yeah. the USA land shot as well or not? No, just the English no, one at no. the moment. Okay, so there's the, that one. I'll share it again and I'll give you the, the USA one. There. Wow. That's incredible. Oh, that is really amazing. Isn't that exquisite? Yes, yes. It doesn't look real when you were showing it to us. No. I, yeah. I was saying it looks pixelated. Is it okay? Is something wrong yes. with the connection? Yes. And so I was like, no, that's that's how it is. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I yeah. love yes. it. I've seen a couple of pictures um similar to this, but you can actually see where the farmers water they, they irrigate the fields using a circular a circular piece of equipment. And so uh, you have a square field yes. but with, a, with a circular kind of line drawn through it where the traps of the machinery go. Oh, right. Really? And, oh, that's and that's the same. There's like hundreds of them. Mm. Yeah, they have um, effluent sediments, uh, sediment tanks as well. They're circular, yeah. like cylinders. And they sort of come up in in sort of quadrant shapes and that they also make superb um geometric shapes and uh, combinations yeah yeah I always, I always think as well it's it's amazing when you when you're looking down from the, the satellite images and um, the images that you show towards towards the end of the chalk quarries oh yes and you, you see the the difference and just the the quality of colour when you see the chalk quarries yeah. and then you see the the lagoons next to them where they filled them in yeah and they're just like just piercing blue yeah and I've actually I've done some artwork using those um, okay. but I haven't got them on here I haven't got my images on here yeah but they. Oh, I'll just get you. I'll just get you a book that's where I've done. Right. This is all done with Google Earth permission and using Google Earth. There's that. How beautiful. That's using those China clay quarries. Um, and this is um, Exeter. So what did you do, Anna, to make that? Oh, oh. it's a secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's oh, not. It's come not. on. <laughs> it was, all I did was I took a square of uh, Google Earth, Earth and then I flipped it um, horizontally and then flipped them again vertically. Yeah. So okay. this, for example, if you cut one quarter there, that's the image I saw. Yeah. And then I flipped okay. it that way and flipped them both that way. Right. Well, that looks so, like some sort of insect under your microscope. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one. Have you been a pattern maker, Anna? No, no, I'm, uh, this was for my photography degree. This is how you make repeat patterns, you know, if you're doing block printing or something like this. Uh, the uh, same process. Yeah. yeah. I, I tried printing, I'm absolutely useless at it. So, uh, <laughs> it's something that I really enjoy. 
but um, I could never be technically skilled at it because I'm too mucky. I always have fingerprint marks on everything. So I actually print make once a week just because I really enjoy it, but it's mm. not part of my professional practice. <laughs> it's just for me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. I thought I would enjoy it too, but I didn't because I, I just couldn't get what I wanted to get. So. Yeah. Hey, can I just say that um, thanks for your presentation. I think that it's really bold um, to use technology um, because I, I, personally I don't think that technology, art and technology, I think that art and technology has been somewhat squeezed out of the visual art world, um, you know, of late. And it's really good to see, you know, these, these using these technologies, it's exciting. Um, Google Maps is something that I'm, I've spent a lot of years working with. Um, I'm very comfortable with it. You know, I've worked with the, you know, the Google Maps API and the Bing Maps API. Um, so what do you do with those? Well, I, 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 I used it for web development to okay. plot, plot like kind of map layers, points of yes. interest, basically. Okay. Um, but I think it would be really fascinating, um, you know, if, you, if there was like a, you know, an API for what three words and, you know, you could kind of like maybe, you know, we're talking about privacy and um, like, um, mm -hmm. you know, using like words words that are, might, might be private and reveal locations. But I think it would be interesting if you could actually, you know, like tap into public data sets or even like um, live information on like, you know, Twitter, like hash, hash codes, hashtags you know, for incidents and somehow, you know, like, you know, get this, this location and, you, you know, um, you know, get the, the, the kind of use Google to get a, a geocode location and then mm. send that location to like what three words and get, get the three words for it. You know, you, this could be like a, you know, like a, a, a real time thing, you know, for plotting, you know, incidents, you know, from like, I don't know what kind of incidents, maybe, um, you know, I was thinking like, you know, climate change, you know, the disappearing yeah. you know, ice, ice, oh, yes. ice kind of yes. fields and it, would, it could become like a, a kind of Dada type sort of, you know, um, experience, you know, this, <laughs> you know, almost, so I think it's almost like the way we view the landscape in the world. It's like, mm. you know, I mean, to an extent, I think, you know, you know, I mean, it can become really abstract and for a lot of people, you know, um, like you know, I mean, somewhat kind of meaningless, you know. So obviously, it's like you know, you, it's a response somehow. You know, like these words, what do they actually mean? These words are mm. obviously generated by our, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence. You know, to yes. for every three square meters on the planet, it must be just like billions of locations. You know, so it's like you know, there's so many ways to play with this of actually extracting yes. you know this data and. Mm. Um, you know, ingesting it into a system and, you know, being being creative with it. But I think also in terms of the microscope, that was really fascinating because, yeah. you know, it's like this contrast between the massive, the big, you know, right, and the molecular that you're working with. And, um, you know, now I was like, during lockdown, I was playing with, you know, my camera lenses and um, I had this like extender tube thing that turns it into like a macro oh, lens yes, and I had... That, yeah. I had like the remote control for the TV on the on the table, and that became like my subject that I was practicing with. So I was taking pictures of it, and then yeah. actually looking at the result, and I, I was I was horrified at the amount of dirt, you know, <laughs> on this remote control, and and how, you know, how kind of frightening it looked. Um, so I think it's this yes. this idea, you know, that like everyone's kind of like focused right in on the molecular as well these mm. nowadays at the moment, and it's like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, creating like like a view of you know a, a detail that um, we otherwise you know um, just kind of took for, for for granted. You know, so yeah. I, yes. I like the kind of the play of the contrast between you know the you know just the the global space and you know the the, the idea of like kind of being able to do this journey. You know, like um, you know from like you know like uh, one location. To the other because obviously that was like you know thousands and thousands of miles and mm. it's amazing how you can do that you know mm. so th th there's so much going on here in terms of like you know chopping up and you know you know um 
you know, la- la- all kinds of stuff layered on a on a on a globe, and I think that's what a lot of people, you know, we get worried about nowadays. Is you know, what 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 are explorers going to explore next, and you mm. know, whether they're going to go and where does it end, you know? But I, I, I just think it's really a really fascinating, and I really commend you for actually using this technology. It's fantastically oh, creative. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. We obviously yeah. haven't, haven't perfected it yet. <laughs> But I think that's, well, that's the yeah, sort of that's beauty case, yeah. of it as well, that we haven't perfected yeah. it. And, mm. you know, for that, we're still playing with it. And mm. I, I think that's important. I don't think you should be a slave to technology, you know. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, you definitely know, not, because you can spend a long time it. learning it. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can spend a long time learning it. And I think if, if you want to do stuff you know then you could do you know like branch off your collaboration and work with like data scientists or computer programmers and you know mm-hmm. there's no point in spending 10 years learning the tools how to no. do something you know when you you don't you just don't have that time so you know that, that option's there as well but mm-hmm. but yeah i think it's i think it's amazing the way that you know we've um really subdivided you know the, the world into you know like tiny little parcels yes um, but, but, amazing. Uh, don't you also think you know when we talk about the natural world um you know and we go out in nature and we we think about how you know that that google maps just shows how 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 our impact is on on the natural world you know and how we we've boundaried everything and own it yeah and I, I think it just shows that so clearly Mm. Yeah, definitely. Boundaries and, uh, you know, when you mentioned frontiers at the beginning, um, and I think you also mentioned um, was it the space in between. Yes, mm-hmm. the, the literal, the literal yeah, which, is the, yeah. You know, which is which is a little bit of an interesting conundrum because you think of frontiers, um, you, you know, you don't, you have like a space in between, but you wouldn't think of a frontier being within the space, you think of the the frontier at either side, you know, of the mm-hmm. of the boundary. So it's an interesting, you know, if you cross over, you're working at the frontier. But I think when you're working the space in between, you know, the frontier seems to always be at the other side of it, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the frontier is also where the spaces meet. Um, you know, and we we realized that we had water separating us, but it separates us, but it still unites us at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then that that frontier line is a sort of that imaginary line, which separates and connects at the same time. Mm-hmm. And the distances in between, we um, we bridge through our curiosity and interest in one yeah. another uh, in one another's mm-hmm. worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, you know, because obviously, I mean, obviously, distance is you know like a become you know like a very important concept um theme for a lot of artists to work with and having to deal with because of the pandemic and mm. you know we've yes. been trying to find new new ways of actually you know working in a um with each other you know so mm. yeah and i think it's important that we do that you know i mm. think that it's more important than ever in fact that we we find new ways to do that and to and to share what we're doing and that's it's one of the reasons why we're so grateful that you um offered this event actually <laughs> good <laughs> i think it'd be really interesting if i'm not sure if there's a way um using what three words to actually automatically pull all the words of the locations that you pass through on a journey so you know to like pull every single word from every single three meter square for for a complete journey. I'm yeah. sure you could yeah. do it. Well, I, I think you could do that, Simon. Yeah. If you yeah. if you record if you recorded the yes. the journey in GPS and got the the the, the, way, the waypoints, you know, the yeah. marker yeah. the points, yeah. and if, if if what three words had like an API, then you could just set something up to send it and get the result back for every every you know point that it recorded yeah and you'd have you know, all the, and if you all the did words, that you, know. you would have ai automatic writing yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. like as yeah. a concept yeah. <laughs> which is <Yeah>. just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it would be, you know, I mean, if you could have like a real time system or something, it would be, it'd be pretty incredible. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's so many possibilities. Yeah, the Internet I'm, of Things. <laughs> I'm definitely going to start yeah, using it when I'm, when I'm out at the beaches, when I'm out yeah. drawing at the beaches. Yes, yes, it, it really, it really stimulates thoughts, yeah. I find. Yeah, yeah. It's been great talking to everyone and getting their thoughts and comments because it's really um, opened, well, certainly opened my mind. I don't know about you, Anna and Heidi, but lots of Definitely. ideas going on at the moment. Mm. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for that. Thank you. Thank yes. you for sharing. And, yeah. Well, well thanks for giving us the nice Every time you talk, it, it helps. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for all your suggestions yes. and interaction. And yes, thank you. Really and thanks lovely. for giving us the space to talk about this. Yeah. No, absolutely. Thank you for coming. Um, anything that you would like us to add on in terms of text to the um, YouTube video of this event, just send it to us, um, email or WhatsApp, and we'll add that on to um, the text and we'll get it uploaded in the next couple of days we'll get it done as yes. soon as possible um can i can i send you um a jpeg of the um of the postcard that we made or have um, you got that i've got we've got the postcard but i don't know if we can upload oh actually yes if yeah, you send yeah. it to us a jpeg then that could be your little you get like a cover for your video so we could have that as the cover if you'd like that. We have, we have a JPEG of the, of the postcards. Oh, we do? Yeah. Oh. Um, one of the things that we are, that we are doing, um, I don't know if you've heard, ladies, but we've... I'm gentle. I'm gentle. Um, we've scanned every single postcard that we've been sent as oh. part of the postcard oh. um, submission. We've scanned the front and back of every postcard um, the postcards are currently up being exhibited in a, in a small gallery in the middle of the island here. Um, and when the festival finishes, we're going to compile all of the front and backs of the postcards into a book. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, great. Super, you've been working so hard. Yeah, Thank you yeah. very much. It's yeah. been terrific. Does everyone so here know fun. about that project? Does everyone know about the postcard project here? Well, they should do. Yep. See, do. do you know about it? No? Vaguely. Oh, okay. And, and Anna tells me about these things, so I, I, I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so one of, one of the things that we've done um, is we've given artists the opportunity, if they've sent a postcard into us, we've given them the opportunity to, to pay for postage and we'll send them a postcard from a different artist. Um, and we'll also include a little note to tell them how far the postcards actually travel. Mm. And it's been interesting because even though, even though the deadline's passed and the exhibition started, we're still getting postcards coming through. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, just showing amazing. how different the kind of experiences are around the world at the minute. So we received one just this week that's come from Chile, and um, it was from an artist who's, de who's delivering another writing event, by the way. Um, Annie and Katie, particularly, I think you would be yes. interested in that. Um, so it's come from Alita, and she emailed and said, "Oh, I'm really sorry, but I can't, I can't post it because." there's no postal service everything's in lockdown i can't do anything and so she sent us a scan as like a, a kind of placeholder you know um and then it arrived yeah this week so it's just kind of showing how different people's experiences are mm. of the of yes. the kind of pandemic feel it's really interesting yeah. but also her her postcard was quite political and she wasn't sure no that was lucidia oh, that arrived last week. oh yeah yeah. yeah, Lucy just sent a, a political postcard and she was she was quite concerned. 
he thought <laughs> that it would actually get stopped and wouldn't actually make it out of the country if it was that difficult. Yeah. Wow. So the, there's been some wow. really interesting ones. Yes. Through, hasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so if you've not sent one yet and you would still like to, then feel free. Um, you can still send us a postcard and be part of the project, absolutely. Yeah. And we've got blank postcards in the gallery in a selection of materials for people that are visiting the exhibition. They can create postcards and we're going to include those in the book as well. Oh, wow. Super. Is that, is that in Yaizo? It yeah. is, yes. Yeah. Okay. In where, in, sorry, in where? In Yaizo. Y A I Z A. Yeah. I'll get Sarah to find the, the what three words. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Let's do that. And then you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we, um... You've started a trend, Annie. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. For the festival this year, we, we had. Um, requested a lot of local galleries because we were hoping that we were going to be able to hold the festival physically this year um, and a lot of the places didn't contact us in the lead up to the to the festival because they had no idea whether we, we were going to be able to accept artists to the island yeah. or not um, and this Yaitha exhibition is it's a location that we booked two years ago um, and they contacted us just a few weeks before the festival launched and said, do you still want the exhibition space? Ooh. <laughs> and we were like, oh, we can actually have it. We were wow. actually, like, really I'm, I'm looking at the pictures. I'm looking at the pictures on Google. Beautiful. It's a lovely place. Yeah, I don't Ooh. understand so why. All the buildings are white. Three words yet. Sorry. I can't seem to search to... Oh, just up the road from us, though, is Striped Clogs Path. Oh, I could spend hours <laughs> doing this. Hours and hours uh, and hours. Uh, there is a little walkthrough as well of the um, exhibition on our YouTube channel. So you can have a little yeah, a little yeah. glance at, at what's that. I know it's not the same as being there physically, but mm. it gives you an idea. No, it's so impressive oh, looking at the YouTube. Beautiful gallery. Mm. Yeah, that's YouTube is amazing. Stunning. Yeah, in Lanzarote, we're really lucky because a lot of the Ayuntamiento and Cabildo spaces are historical buildings that have been restored. Um, and so they're beautiful spaces um, with really nice features. You know, like this gallery's got this beautiful um, wooden ceiling. Um, it's just, and this lovely internal courtyard. Um, yeah, and all of the spaces that the Ayuntamientos have, there's like a, an old convent, there's an old church, uh, oh, there's old, yeah, there's old government buildings, and so they're all, they've all got kind of a really lovely, unique character. Yes. And what, what's the art scene like out there? The art scene here is, um, there's quite a big grassroots art scene, um, particularly yes from younger artists who've been and studied um, on the mainland and then returned here. There's a few cultural associations that support local artists, which is really great. Um, but there's no art university here. In fact, there's no university here. So you can go to college here, um, 16 to 18, and there's an art school, Pancho Lasso, which is yeah. in the capital. Um, so we've got young artists, and then we've got this kind of grassroots scene um, but then there aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of galleries that show kind of things that you would see in the mainland or in the UK, for example. Yes. So it's yes. very rare that you'd get like you know a big Picasso exhibition or something like that here. That's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and to see things like that, you probably have to go to Tenerife um, or maybe Gran Canaria. Um, I, mean, I noticed yeah. um, in the spring the gallery in Aria, like in the very north at the top of the island, yeah. there's a gallery, a basement gallery, and I was so surprised at how contemporary that show was, full of like feminist, like strong feminist statements and blood, and I was very surprised, yeah. in a good way. Yeah, I think it was Adriana Sandek who, so she's come up through Pancho Lasso, the art school in Arecife, mm -hmm. um, and she's now, I think she's maybe two years out of art school. Yeah. 
Yeah. And she's very active. She's really active and it's great because she is really contemporary and she's kind of really on point and assertive, which is, yeah, which is what... The other... Um, I don't, I don't know how to talk about the visual arts of the island properly, but the other aspect of it that isn't maybe so prevalent in the UK is is the the crafts and the people who make and sell every week on a Saturday or a Sunday. So there's a big culture of making and selling. Yeah, that's true. The traditional arts and crafts scene on the island is huge. They value their heritage crafts so much. Um, and it and it's fantastic because it means that traditional practices are still around and about. You know, traditional weaving, um, traditional crocheting, dyeing using cochineal beetles. Like, yeah, it's really fab. It's really fab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just seen that Heidi's posted a message saying that she has to go. We have been talking for a really long time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but thank Very you. Well. Yeah. yeah. Can I just sorry about that? The uh, the I better duck out though. <laughs> the gallery that where we're having the exhibition is only rising, subtracting. Wow. Kate, I think you're going to get lost in our. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that might happen. That's why I need a week. I need a whole week. <laughs> I, I don't think a week's going to be long enough. <laughs> no, I don't think it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much yeah. for having your work. And thank you so much for having us. It's been absolutely yeah, thank you. eye opening. Yeah, it's been I've really great. enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been really lovely and a lovely animated conversation. So, so mm. thanks, everyone. It's a yeah, lot more positive, positive than I thought it was going to be, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> you thought people might be bored. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Could I, could I um, just do a quick plug of if, if people have enjoyed um, my hack collective this evening, then they will be joining a discussion on Thursday night about creativity during lockdown at 7 p.m. So that's this this Thursday, 7 p.m. Anyone yeah. else is interested? Yeah.